got it, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Hope y'all doing okay today. So I'm going to do something that is uh, completely out of the ordinary for any of the videos that I post up here. Um, I want to talk about sci-fi and geeky stuff. So to start off, I am a huge Star Trek nerd. I love watching them, I re-watch them, sorry about the rumble strips, there's construction here, I re-watch them, I like a good percentage of the new stuff that's come out on uh, Paramount Plus, all that stuff. The only issue that I have with a lot of Star Trek that's come out, and this goes back to uh, Star Trek Enterprise, which starred uh, Scott Bakula, is I don't, what in the actual world, I gotta, okay, that was a little weird, dude pulled off into the grass, off the interstate, right in front of me, that was weird. The only issue that I have with, uh, a lot of the newer Star or with two series in the newer Star Trek, so Enterprise and then Discovery, the biggest issue I have with them is they fit in between established time periods or before established time periods. And in many cases, the technology that's in the series or certain elements of continuity aren't uh, preserved. That bugs the crap out of um, give you a case in point in Star Trek the original series with Captain Kirk and Spock there were numerous times where they legit had paper on clipboards for things go to the, the series Enterprise they had pads which weren't all that dissimilar from what we have as iPads. Even had uh, physical buttons on the sides or on the bottoms of them in this series. And, you know, continuity errors like that. Now, I realize that there were things that Gene Roddenberry in the 60s could have never dreamed up that would have happened. And when I watched the Kelvin, the first movie in the Kelvin timeline, Star Trek XI, that came out in 2009, I was sitting next to a buddy of mine who's a huge Star Trek nerd. And we're watching it, and there's this huge shot where you first get to see this universe's Enterprise. And the camera kind of comes around another ship to reveal it, and you see Enterprise, and it's a huge orchestral arrangement and everything kind of a big reveal and I kind of leaned over to my buddy and I whispered man that was Gene Roddenberry's baby right there said, yep and what I meant by that was Gene Roddenberry had this fantastic idea for a TV series that's run on for decades now and if he would have had the technology, budget, and ability to create a lot of what's on screen in, say, the Kelvin timeline, uh, Star Trek Enterprise, which took place about 100 years before James Kirk, he would have done it. He was just so limited by his budget and what was available. I, I remember listening to some interviews that were done with original cast members and sometimes the sets were held together by masking tape and spray paint over top of it just so it would blend in with the rest of the set. So, you know, it was a broke show. They didn't have no money when the franchise first started and then it took off and, you know, you, you got the things that you got, which were pretty cool. But I've never liked in any series where they stick a prequel 
in between two established time periods and just kind of mess with continuity. I will say, you know, I'm, I'm a bigger Star Trek fan than I'm a Star Wars fan, but I've watched all the Star Wars movies, and I will say that all those movies that they've slid in those gaps, because um, you've got the original trilogy, you've got the prequels, you've got... Uh, Solo, a Star Wars story, you've got Rogue One, all those fit in continuity-wise. There's no massive leaps in technology that you've kind of got to explain away. And in Discovery, they did that all over the place in the first two seasons. That's crap out of it. So, Discovery experiments with a... The, the entire ship, Discovery, is... A experimental propulsion technology that makes traveling the entire galaxy possible in makes it possible to travel across the galaxy in seconds. And it's uh, really interesting technology, you know, the way they do it, the way they explain it that way and all that stuff, but none of that fit in continuity. And then, just over a hundred years later, in the Star Trek timeline, that's when Voyager takes off and ends up lost in the Delta Quadrant seven years. And that technology would have made it possible for them to be home that fast. Granted, their ship was never equipped with it out of the shipyard. But... Come on, move out of your way, folks. Oh, that's bad. I'm going to pause here, folks. Holy smokes, folks! Right where... I actually got within spitting distance of where I got hit a couple weeks ago. There was another accident, another multi-vehicle, but uh, a bunch more damage, and one of them was sitting on its side. So, yeah, that's interesting. But this technology, if it could have been adapted to Voyager, could have cut their journey short by three years. It would have taken them 70 years to get back home uh, in the Voyager timeline, for those of you that don't know. Spoiler alert! Um, originally it took 23 or 26 years to get home and after that, on an anniversary, Janeway, who was an admiral, decided, you know what? I'm violating the Temporal Prime Directive and I am getting my crew home today. And so she got them home right at the seven year mark. Uh, Voyager started communicating with Starfleet Command um, somewhere around four years into their journey. And that technology would have made it possible for them to get home right around then. Which would have been a great thing for the crew and their families that were separated by the majority of a galaxy away from their loved ones. So, they did explain away why that didn't happen. They ended up classifying the that specific drive technology. It was the displacement activated spore hub drive. They classified all that technology above top secret and then eventually destroyed all the records of both the ship and the technology so that it could never be duplicated for reasons. That said, being only a hundred years out, I don't 
sorry I'm driving so close in front of you, dude. I don't particularly buy that they would have been so thorough in getting rid of that tech quite so fast and someone would have spoke up my opinion. So, that kind of bugs me in Discovery. There's other things, you know, the touchscreen displays are a thing, which, yes, Gene Roddenberry would have done had he had the budget, but he never did. Everything was all manual switches and knobs and buttons. Um, there was also a semi-holographic heads-up display on this ship in several places, which, yes, he would have done, but it wasn't the original. Also, the entire Klingon fleet was not, uh, none of the ships looked right compared to previously established appearances for the ships, so that was kind of weird. And there were just some continuity errors that I didn't like in the first two seasons. They fixed it going into season three. Um, I've told numerous people it's really good sci-fi. In a vacuum outside of any other context in context in Star Trek, it's really good Star Trek. But it just douses a lot of continuity in gasoline and throws a match on the fire. So that's kind of my take on it. Got another sci-fi take for you coming up in another video. Stay tuned.